Howdy! How's everybody out there in YouTube land this morning? Today we're going to paint some black bears on this wood plaque. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about this. This is a basswood plaque, just a little wood plaque. And uh, you can get these. Benny Craft Store has a bunch of these little plaques. They're real thin. They're about an eighth of an inch, maybe thick. And um, what I've done here is I engraved two bears on my plaque. And then I stained the plaque with pecan stain. And now it's ready to paint. I like to do my staining on these first. Uh, you can do it either way. You can paint them and then you can let them dry and then you can stain them on top of the, the paint if you want to. I like to try to stain them first if I can. Seems to make things a little bit simpler. And these are going to be black bears. Now, if you watch my Twitch show that I did yesterday, there's my my grizzly bear that I painted on one of these plaques. Give you an idea of uh, kind of what we're going for. But these are going to be black bears. Something a little different. And since they're going to be black, I need some black paint out. So I'm going to get some black paint out of my paint jug here. And we'll just start there. Wipe my palette knife off. Keep my tools clean. And then I'm going to Put the lid back on my paint so it don't dry out over here. And I'm going to take a little of this paint on a micro brush and I'm going to start doing the outline. I'm going to outline them first. And we just go around all the outer edges of it with the black paint. Staying inside the lines. Go in with the black and then I will mix a little bit of black with some white to make a gray for my shadowing. Doesn't take very long to do this. You just have to be patient with it. I don't want my paint to be real thick on there. So all it has to do is just cover up the wood grain color. Any place that it's a little thick, you just grab it and you pull it on out into the body of the bear. We'll get that all blended up in a little bit. The idea is to get around the edges of it first without going outside the line. I love these little micro brushes. They just get in the little nooks and crannies so easy. It saves a whole lot of work. I'm going to have to talk to that company about being an affiliate. So I really like their product. Back here on that tail a little bit. Okay, now that we've got that one done, we're going to come over here to the other little bear, the baby bear. And we're going to outline him. Get the cub. Oops, I'm getting him out of the range of the camera. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing.
So if you get the paint on them too dark, then you don't see where you have done the engraving inside the body of the animal. So you don't want to get it too dark. I still want to be able to see those lines because that's going to indicate where I need to put the shadowing with the gray I'm going to mix up. There we go. Right on down this back leg. Get the little foot. He's a little tootsie. That's the funniest story I have to tell about a black bear. It's many years ago when I was doing the animal swap meats, I lived on the farm. It was animal swap meat for anybody that doesn't know what it is. It's much like a flea market only you bring your animals from the farm that you want to sell and this was a swap meat that was out in the country on a farm and this place had a great big old front yard and he had everybody pulling up there in the front yard and setting up right behind their vehicles and i got there just a little late I think it might have been going on about an hour by the time I got there. So, you know, there was quite a few people there already. And so I just pulled in there and got in line with everybody else and jumped out of the van to get my stuff out and walked out around behind the van and opened up the back door and went to pulling out the things that I wanted to sell, get my table set up and all, you know. And I felt something have a hold of my leg. And I looked down and there was a black bear had a hold of my Bridge's leg. And I looked up and there was two fellas at the truck beside me. Oh, they was just laughing. They thought it was the funniest thing because I guess they thought, you know, I was going to run off screaming like a little girl. Well, they found out that I was made of a little stronger stuff than that because I looked down at the bear and looked back at them. Looked down at the bear and looked back at them. They're just laughing and hee hawing. Thought it was just funny, funny, funny. And I said, uh, hey, Y'all want to call your bear off or do I make a rug out of him now? And <laughs> they wiped the smiles off their faces, called off their bear. <laughs> Kept their bear away from me for the rest of the day. But Lord have mercy. You know, there's some people that just don't have any business with an exotic animal. That's a good way to get that animal shot. Because the animal doesn't know any better. It's just doing what comes natural to it. A lot of the states have gotten all kinds of excited about people having exotic animals and been throwing fits about it and setting laws against it and all. Now, there's some people that they can, they can do it and they know what they're doing. And there's other people who ain't got no business in this world with an exotic animal. I never wanted to get off into any exotics myself. I, I, I like rare heritage animals, you know, animals that they used to have back in the old days and they ain't got them no more. That's, that's the ones I liked. I, I raised um, several different kinds of exotic animals on my farm. I had lavender turkeys. I had... Uh, Sebastopol geese is another one that's rare heritage. I had Tunis sheep, American Tunis sheep. They're red sheep. I've uh, got red hair on them, or red wool, I guess I should call it. And I had, um, let's see, what all else did I have that was exotic out there? I had just about every color of guinea fowl that there was. Some of them are a little rare. I'm trying to think now. What else did I have out there that was rare? Um, I had peacocks, but they're not really that rare. I had India blues. And I had um, 
rowan ducks and I had um, barred rock chickens. I had all kinds of little, what we call warm room critters where you, you know, you have to have a room where you're going to keep them warm. They're not farm animals like hedgehogs and duprazies and jerds and hamsters and gerbils, Siberian dwarf hamsters and the regular hamsters and long haired hamsters. And I had all different kinds. I had even some tricolored hamsters. Boy, they were pretty. Calicos, you know, like you see a calico cat. I had hamsters like that, long haired calicos. I had some panda hamsters too. That was real cool. I was black and white like a panda bear. Short haired and long haired both. Short tail possums. All kinds of little varmints. Rabbits. I had 17 breeds out of the 44 recognized breeds by the American Rabbit Breeders Association. Everything was pedigreed, and ear tagged. I had an alpaca. I had Nigerian dwarf goats and pygmy goats. All kinds of critters out there on the farm. It was a full-time job, let me tell you what. be nice if I'd keep that under the camera, wouldn't it? How about, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get this camera lowered down here a little bit. And positioned right on it. There. Now, if I stop moving around, we should be in good shape. Lord have mercy. What's wrong with me this morning here? Fill this body in, then I come back with the micro brush on anything around the edges and stuff that I've missed. I need to get darkened in. And then we can go to the gray for the shadows. See some spots around edges that I missed on that. So let's grab the micro brush. That's what it's good for. It's dabbing in them little spots around the edge. Just little specks here and there that can just use a dab more paint. Okay, now it looks like I got them coated with the black. Maybe just a little bit up here on his head. No? There we go. Right out to that line without going over it. Now, let me take a look in the camera here because it looks different on the camera than it looks close up to me. All right, we got that in. Now, what we're going to do, see, I can still make out the lines here on it, but you can't make them out there on the camera very good. So we're going to change that. We're going to make some gray 
what you can't see here is I'm putting some white paint down on my palette. I'm going to mix just a touch of black in that. Just a touch. Come in and get just a touch. That's probably even too much right there. But we'll, we'll start with that. We'll mix it until we get a gray. If we need more, we'll go back and get more. But see, that's looking gray to me. But I might want a little darker shade of gray for this. Mix all that white into it because I don't want to end up with no white on my picture. It's got to be gray. And you can't see it yourself. So let me move the camera back a little bit so you can see the paint. Try to remember to get it up here for the picture. But see, that's, that's too light of a shade of gray. So I'm going to get just a touch more black and mix in there. Get it all knocked down there off the knife. It's still too light to suit me. It's got to be a little darker shade. That black, man, I'll tell you what, that, that black will take over in a heartbeat. You've got to be careful with that black. So now it's getting darker. Mashing into that white real good. Kind of a charcoal gray is what I'm going after. And even then, I think I can go just a touch darker. There, now, now it's getting to be a charcoal gray. Now that's what I'm after. Mix that in. Nice dark shade of gray. That black off the knife and get it mixed in there. See, and that's how you mix paint. Just take a little of this and a little of that and you keep mixing until you get it the right color. If you're using white and black, you start out with your white and you just add a touch of, of black to it. And you keep adding black just a touch at a time until you get it the shade you want it. If you start out with black and add white, you better have a bucket of white paint. <laughs> All right, put the lid back on my white so I don't dry that out. Now I'm going to take my micro brush and you just need a little bit of this. And I may have to go back and get black and blend it, but that's okay. I don't care. See, we'll put a little there. And then we're going to want some up in front of these legs right there. The belly. And we're going to want, let's see. Maybe maybe just a tad there. We want some under there, under this chest, to that leg. We're going to want a little bit, maybe back behind the ear there some. And let's say maybe just a tiny touch there on the nose. Now I'm going to do one bear at a time. Because I'm going to just start blending that gray. Yep, I'm going to have to come in with a little bit more black on that. That's all right. We can do that. Just darken that gray up just a little bit there. Just adding the shadowing. And there again, I forgot to move the camera. There we go. Now you see what I'm doing. Okay, now got that about the way I want it there. I'm going to come in with a little bit of black right here and just ease it right into that gray. So yeah, that just leaves just a tiny touch of shadow, just a touch. Just a touch. Shadowing in there. And come up in here. Minute amount of black, just blend it. Blend it in. 
I want people to be able to see where the engraving is. See, now I come in with too much black there. We'll come in with a little gray. Let's blend it together. Just want the engraving to kind of show up there. See how that kind of pops that out so that you can see where the engraving is? That's what we're after. Get a little black on the brush to blend it just a little more. Just blend it. Now we've got a little on the nose up here, so we're going to come in with just a little touch of black. Grab that. And then we're going to put just a little gray in that eye just to lighten it up a touch. Oops. Maybe just too much. There. That's better. That's better. Come back in with just a touch of black on that. Yeah, it's too dark. Hey, can I hit a happy medium with it? We'll just keep going till we get it so this shows up some. Take my brush. Just fan that out some. Okay, little bear's looking good. There's little bear. All right, now we'll go into big bear. Now for big bear, we're going to put just a little shadowing back here at the tail. A little shadowing here around the belly. A little on this back leg under here. Be a little shadow. Okay. Come up here on his chest a little bit, front leg. Be a little bit back here in the back of the head. Maybe a little on the nose, up in there. Now wipe off the brush and start blending. I'm gonna blend it with just, whoops, just a touch of the black. Just leaves just a hint of a shadow in there. Pinch of black here to blend that gray down under that leg. Another little tinge of black to blend this right here. On his chest, get just another little tinge of black to blend this up here on the back of his head. Another little tinge for his face. A little spot there that needs touched. There we go. 
Now, I'll take my brush, fan that whole thing. It's blend, 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 blend. So I don't want to see any brush strokes on him. I want him to be all blended. I just use little little circular motions with my brush. It's fast circular motions, just keeping it on the body. Don't get it off the body onto the wood. And that blends it all in. So, say there. Hold it so the light ain't glaring off of it. There they are. Little bears. Let's see, he's got a little bit up here on his face needs blended yet, doesn't he? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Grab the brush. Bring it back in there on the face and fan that out. Okay. Get so the light's not glaring on it. Turn it different directions here. There we go. Now I got it. See, they just kind of shine. It'll be a lot shinier once I get the Krylon on them. It's sparkly. Almost like I got glitter on them and I don't have any glitter on them. Pretty cool, huh? So there you have that. And it, you can check down there in the description of my video. It has my Etsy store. It has my Patreon channel. It has my Instagram and my Twitter accounts. There's all kinds of places you can find me if you want to see more of my artwork and things that I do and uh, be, give this thumbs up, share it on your social media. So everybody learns how to be creative. And with all that being said, I guess there's just one thing left to say, and that's Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda.